Welcome back, I'm Danny the Dinosaur Drawer and today we're going to be drawing Megalodon vs. Mosasaurus. So this is the longly awaited and highly anticipated drawing that, we're, that you guys have been requesting for quite some time now and yeah, today we're going to be drawing it. So get out your mechanical pencil, your pen, whatever drawing device you're using. To start off with the outline, I'm going to be using a lighter um, shade of pencil, 2H. Here's my eraser by the way. <laughs> You should get an eraser out as well, unless your pencil still has an eraser. My mechanical pencil, the eraser basically got worn down. And these pencils don't have an eraser, so that's why I'm using those big, nice white erasers. So yeah, let's get started with an outline. We're going to be drawing the Mosasaurus first, I think, since it's on the left side. So I'm going to make a curved line like so. They're from Jurassic World, the game, by the way. Both of them are level 40. It's actually quite a challenging drawing. So I'm going to congratulate all the one, all of you who actually do the entire drawing. I've been putting this drawing off for quite some time now, but you guys keep on requesting it, so I finally decided to do it. So here's the basic outline for the Mosasaurus. It's basically diving down the eye is going to be right about here. It's basically diving down and sweeping toward the Megalodon, which is right about here. They're about to like bite into each other or whatever. So the Megalodon's curved upwards, like so. This is just an outline to get the basic idea of what the drawing is going to look like. So both of these prehistoric creatures were about the same length around 50 feet long. Clearly very massive. But they had completely different like attack strategies, I guess. Like their jaws are shaped completely different. So it would have been really interesting to see who would win in a fight. I would vote on the Mosasaurus, but the shark could easily win. So yeah, that looks like a pretty good outline. It's quite simple. But let me zoom out a bit, by the way. It's quite simple, but it'll have to do for now. Soon we're going to be putting in a lot more putting in a lot more detail. So yeah, I'm gonna get my mechanical pencil out for the more tedious part. We basically want to get this nice curve in the back refined. So we're not not going to be erasing this line. Then I'll take an, another line down. From here, stop right there because that's where the back flipper is going to be. See, Mosasaurus mostly propelled itself with its tail, as did Megalodon. But like some of the other sea reptiles, like Elasmosaurus, used their flippers to propel. Mosasaurus probably used its flippers to navigate through the water, more like a steering type thing. So that flipper is sticking out there. Chest area. It's gonna have this flipper out here. This is like the second step basically. Just getting in a little bit more detail. So the head is going to be the hardest part of the Mosasaurus, as you can probably tell already. So we're going to do the bottom jaw here. Basically the neck is going to come up and meet the bottom jaw right about there. And erase a bit there. So as far as I can tell, I think I'm the first YouTuber to be doing a video on Mosasaurus vs. Megalodon. So I'm really excited about this drawing. I can't wait to see what it looks like at the end. So the eye is going to be right about here. So we basically we want to get the, I call this a like second outlining stage. That's where we get everything nice and put in order. So that's the basic shape of the Mosasaurus jaw. So 
So yeah, let's move on to the Megalodon. Of course, we do have to put in... Actually, I forgot about this. It's got like a little... Um, spiky thing on its back. So we'll put that in. And then let's move on to the Megalodon. Get it a bit refined. Got a huge shark-like jaw. I shouldn't say shark-like because it is a shark, so... Yeah, it looks pretty good. By the way, guys, I got a new video editor. I'm still experimenting with that, but it's been a lot of fun. Now I can glue videos together. So, say goodbye to two-part videos. I'm really excited about that. That I'll have to make two-part videos, because I know it's kind of annoying to go look for the part two and stuff. So, the eye is going to be right about there. We'll add the teeth in a little bit later. It's got like spikes along here. It's got dorsal fin. Rather far back. Got a bunch of spikes there. It's going to curve down. And this is where the tail is going to be. So this is basically like a 3,000 subscriber thank you drawing. You probably got already saw the 3,000 subscriber special video in which I had like a little preview drawing of Mosasaurus vs. Megalodon. But this is the actual thing, so... It's going to be really cool. So yeah, this is the... We've basically finished the second outline. So the next step is we're going to be working on the Mosasaurus first, then we'll do the Megalodon second. So yeah, let's get started with a little bit of shading and refining. As you see, I tweaked this little this um, fin a bit. One might want to add those spikes to it. And it curves back like so. And I also was working a little bit on the jaw because it didn't look right, but now it looks pretty realistic. So we're going to leave the jaw like that. So yeah, the basic outline is finished. Now we just need to add a little bit of um, texture and stripes. It's got a bunch of stripes all along the side here. As you guys have probably already seen my um, how to draw level 40 Mosasaurus video, I showed you guys how to draw all the spikes and stripes, and etc. So right now we're going to be doing the spikes on the tail. Actually, I better start up high here. It's better. It's got these spikes. We can't see the end of the tail, but they, the spikes get larger and larger the closer they get to the tail. I have to zoom out a bit. Yeah, that looks a little better. So you can see the whole thing. That's perfect. So yeah, the scales or the, um, the spikes are going to be shaded in. So I'm going to be using this other shading pencil to color them in. Actually, this would be a better choice. A little darker. So I did a review set on my graphite shading set. So you can go check that out on my channel if you want to know what shading pencils I'm using. Actually, I actually have a very small set. It only came with like five different pencils. But that's really all you need. And to be honest with you, my mechanical pencil is almost as good as the whole set put together. So if I were to like the better thing to buy would be the mechanical pencil. Then if you're going to start doing more serious artwork, I guess, then you could go get um, a shading pencil set. So I'm going to color this thing in here. The dorsal fin. More like the dorsal spike, I guess. This paper is really flat. You know it has like no um, grit to it, I guess, like watercolor paper. I like using watercolor paper a lot because you can gives it more of a surreal look, I guess. It's a little rougher. So this paper is really flat, so you really have to color it in. <laughs> like press hard with your pencil. So yeah, that looks pretty good for the spikes and stuff. Next, I'm going to be working a bit on the shading and the refinement. So basically, we want to have little wrinkles along the belly. So you can do that just by swishing your pencil back and forth. Curve them up here. 
on how the wrinkles continue. I don't want to make too big of a deal out about that. And then as you can see, I added this midline, which is quite essential when you're drawing dinosaurs. So add the midline. And then next we're going to be putting in, let's see, I think we should do the stripes next. They're a little bit hard, hard to draw. Actually, now I'm going to put in the shoulder blade first. Got the shoulder blade right about there. We have to do a little bit of anatomy here. Stomach. You have to put a little bit of wrinkles around the, the joint here, where the flipper is connected to the body. Let's put those in. I actually probably should have not colored that dorsal fin in, because I'm going to be smearing it all over with my hand. That's a big problem when you're doing stuff with color pencils and shading. See, so yeah, I'll start here and we'll work down. The basic shape, we should actually just make the outline for each stripe and then color it in later. Basic shape looks sort of like a, actually like a megalodon tooth. More like a boomerang type thing. Basically, you want to have them not go under the tail, you want to have them like end right about there. As they get closer to the torso, they become more like regular s stripes. And of course you want to make it look organic so you can't have them all looking exactly the same. So you don't want to have a few stripes actually coming up from here. have like double stripes, you'll see these a lot on tigers, you know. That's a good way to practice drawing stripes is like go look at a picture of a zebra or a tiger or one of those striped animals. See so the stripes continue all along here. And even, let's add some on the flipper here like so. So another thing I would like you guys to, <laughs> a question I'd like to ask you is, which one do you like better, the Mosasaurus or Megalodon? My personal answer is the Mosasaurus, as I'm sure a lot of you are gonna say Mosasaurus, but there are a few Megalodon lovers out there. So I'd love to see your comments. So yeah, let's add a little bit of shading now. Under the armpit around here. Basically every part that's blocked by the sun is where you're going to put shading in. Because that's basically what shadows are, is where the, sun, where the sun is blocked out. So a lot of people ask me, like, how do you shade? I'm like, I really don't know how to answer your question. This basically just where the, there's no sun, the dark spots basically, just make them darker. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of simple, but really I only got good at shading by practicing. So yeah, we're going to be coloring the stripes as well soon, so after we just get a bit of shading. We'll get the shading down first. Because that's what makes the uh, drawing look 3D. I'm mean, you're drawing like traditional color pencil or um, graphite pencils. You want to shading is a big deal when you're doing black and white pencils. Uh, it is in color pencils as well, but you really see the shadows when you're doing black and white work. So you might want to have it lighten up a bit here as it gets closer to the neck. Don't worry about if it smudges too much. That's what erasers are for. I'll clean it up at the end. See, so now I'm going to color in the stripes. Let's start at the top here. Start at the top and then we'll head down. So yeah, if you guys have any other dinosaur battle requests, I'd be happy to do them. They are a little longer than the other videos, but they're definitely much more fun because you actually get to see them in action.
So please leave a comment below on which dinosaur battle you'd like to see next. So now that we've finished the stripes, we're going to be adding a little bit more refinement, as in we're going to be adding a little bit more scales and a few more wrinkles. So yeah, we want to have the stomach shape show a little bit more. Just want to have some little bit more shading and making these lines here. So we want to have them each curved a bit. But we don't want to make it too dark that you, st that you can't see the stripes. We want the stripes to stand out. But just enough to make, give it a nice 3D look. As you guys have probably been noticing, I've been doing a lot of time-lapse videos on realistic dinosaurs. That's because I'm working on a list of all the famous theropod dinosaurs. And I'm planning to draw them all. So it's, going to be, it's a long list. It's going to probably take a few months to complete. But I'm planning to like maybe, I don't know, publish a book or something on Amazon. Still not sure about how I'm going to publish it. I'm planning to publish my first dinosaur. I don't know, it could be like a book, but more of a little picture thing. I'll keep you guys updated on how that's going. Right now I'm just working on the drawings, not any writings. But I hope to someday publish a few dinosaur books. Maybe even a How to Draw Dinosaurs book. That would be quite fun. But more like storybooks, I guess. Like the story of a Parasaurolophus in Dinosaur Times or something like that. Of course, for like a children's book or something, or any book really, you have to have color drawings. They look a lot more attractive than um, just black and white drawings. So I need, I'm <laughs> trying to learn how to do better with my colored pencils and paints and stuff. Because I'm really not that good at painting or at using color pencils. And I've done a few color pencil works on my channel, but none of them are that good. So yeah, let's, we're going to start by adding scales along the whole length of the Mosasaurus. So we'll start at the top here, as we did with the stripes. I'll probably have some of it time lapsed, so you guys don't have to, you can pause the video, I guess, if I'm going too fast. But you can, um, yeah, just put in the stripes, or the scales between the stripes. You don't really need to put the scales on top of the stripes, because you really won't see them. So just add little round circles for scales. A fast way to do scales is just by twirling your pencil around like that. But if you really want to make your drawing look the most realistic, you want to do lots of little circles. Make a few of them larger than others to give it more of an organic feel. As you guys probably have seen in my time-lapse videos, I do a lot of scales. That's because those videos took, take me like an hour to do. But with tutorial, I have to make it a little quicker. Especially like now when I'm doing two different dinosaurs, it's going to... The whole drawing is probably going to take, I don't know, about 40 minutes or something like that. You just add the scales. If you don't want to, you can, I guess, skip ahead a little bit. But really, if you want to make your drawing look really expert-like, expert you want to do lots of scales. So now that we've finished the scales, we're going to move on to the head. So the head's going to be the most exciting part. We're going to add all those nice teeth and stuff. First, I'm going to put a little bit more refinement into the neck. Basically, this is the mid part of the neck. You want to have nice curved lines to give it a 3D look. And also, we've got to shade in this flipper over here. 
Let's have it nice and dark when it's close to the body and get it a little lighter as it, you go out further. You can add a little bit of scales here. So you have that nice flipper. Maybe add a little bit more refinement there. So that's pretty good for the bottom of the neck. Now we have to put in the teeth and put in this muscle right here. And we'll put in the teeth. So it's, the Mosasaurus has two rows of teeth actually, the one in the game at least. The one in the Jurassic World movie has like, I don't know, like four rows of teeth. It's crazy, he's got a lot of teeth. So you want to have nice T-Rex-like teeth. Always make them a little bigger than you mean to because when you shade around them, they look a lot smaller. So trust me, even this may look a little big, but already I can tell that I made them a little too small. So I'm going to erase this bunch over here. And also make them a little longer than you intend. It's a trick of the trade I learned a long time ago, but I still tend to make my, the teeth too small. So you want to have nice, large teeth. Also right here, I'll leave that open so I can add, put some teeth in there. Now the teeth on the on this side, you can make them a little smaller because they're just going to be against the water and we're not going to be putting dark behind them. So basically, yeah, this whole part here is going to be quite dark. I want to have it nice and shaded in. But first we're going to add the second row of teeth. It's got like a line here, line there, and here you can see these teeth. These teeth are really close together and they're a lot smaller. So have them like that. They basically end right about there. And we might have to do a bit of erasing. That's the reason I'm not shading this area in is because I have to do the bottom teeth next. So Mosasaurus def definitely has a longer jaw than Megalodon, but the question is which one could bite down harder? So the Megalodon looks like it would have an extremely powerful bite because of the shortness in its jaw. The one creature though that probably had a stronger bite than both of them would be Dunkelosteus. Dunkelosteus had an extremely powerful bite. So Mosasaurus would probably, I don't know, it's more like a slicer. It would like slice bits of meat from its prey. The Megalodon seems more like a type of predator that would slam into its prey with one big bite. It would try and kill it. And then it would swim away few yards, then come back for another bite. Basically like modern great whites, except in a much bigger form. But this thing, Megalodon could probably take out a whale, but Mosasaurus would be more of the type that would go after a small shark, smaller as in like 20 feet long, like medium sized sharks. They just like take one out at a time, eat them. But I don't know, Megalodon versus Mosasaurus would be a very close match. Because Mosasaurus could probably take out a whale as well. With ease, actually. Also, like, Megalodon probably would feed on turtles, I guess. Might be able to crunch through their... Well, I don't know. Maybe the larger turtles it could not crunch through, but maybe a smaller turtle would be able to bite through. But both probably fed on fish. So let's put the eye in. I want to have a nice large eye there. One line going through it like that. Sort of like a cat-like eye. And we want to have it all, sh we want to shade all around it up here. Shade all around it. So 
got an eye ridge over here. It tapers off over there. So the nose is going to be right about here. Sort of sitting on top of the head. Probably for breathing purposes when it comes up to the water. Out of the water for more convenience. So yeah, we're going to add a little bit of scales as well. Along here. Along the the lip, I guess. As we did in the bottom jaw. Mosasaurus is an extremely popular <clears throat> aquatic creature because I, I can tell on my on my top five videos, two of them are of Mosasaurus. One is a Megalodon. So I just realized I'm drawing like the most popular dinosaurs out or not dinosaurs, but prehistoric creatures out there. Like I know T-Rex and Indominus Rex and the ra Raptors are popular as well. But these guys, they're like the, the powerhouse sea creatures. And I know you guys love them, so hope you guys are having a fun time drawing them. I was thinking of doing like an interlocking pose where like one is biting to the other but that would, I, after a lot of thought, that would be really hard to draw. And it might have some controversy because if the Megalodon's biting the Mosasaurus, then all the Mosasaurus fans would be like, oh no. But if it's Mosasaurus is biting the Megalodon, then the Megalodon people would be, oh no. So this leaves it in the air, basically. <laughs> so you don't know which one is going to win. And it, could be that it's a draw, you know? Both beasts would probably like take a few bites at each other. But they could see that it's going to be a fight to the death. So either they both die or they end it in the draw. Or whoever, I guess the one that gets the first bite would win. Because, yeah, both of them have huge jaws and lots of teeth. See, so yeah, I'm just adding scales along here. So I was thinking a cool, um, cool dinosaur battle to do would be like Indominus Rex versus Ragistega. Maybe a few more amphibians. And I've also wanted to do for quite some time now T-Rex versus Triceratops. They've been like enemies in books and TV shows. All the, it's all the time. It's T-Rex versus Triceratops. So I'm planning on doing something like maybe a realistic drawing of T-Rex versus Triceratops. Or maybe one from the game. I don't know. Depends on your guys' comments. I think one from the game would look quite cool. I'm not sure if I would draw them level 40 or not. I personally like a lot of the dinosaurs like at level 20 usually because once they're level 40 they look a little too colorful, I don't know, a little fake. <laughs> so we're going to put a little bit of shading between, not as much as I first thought, but put a little shading between the teeth. Because we want the, the second row, to, you want it to stand out a bit more because you can barely see it in the reference image I'm using. You guys have probably seen this reference image before. It's like the one of the first pictures Jurassic, or Ludia shows you of Jurassic World the game is the Megalodon versus Mosasaurus. So when they're in, I think it's, this is the picture they showed when they were introducing the aquatic battles. So yeah, we are finished with our Mosasaurus. Looks really epic. Now we can work on our Megalodon. I personally think Mosasaurus would win, by the way, for all of you who are Mosasaurus fans.
I actually, I actually liked Mosasaurus a lot, even before I saw Jurassic World. It was still my, it was my favorite sea creature. And then when I saw Jurassic World, I was like, yeah, definitely my favorite sea creature. I'll zoom out a bit more so you can see the whole thing a bit better. My whole tail there. So yeah, let's get started on the Megalodon. So the Megalodon's a little easier because we don't have to do any scales. So, we do have to put a little bit of more shading, I guess. So, that, so the Megalodon is divided into a few sections on the top here. It's got like metal, well not metal, it's got like plates on top of it, um, along its back and neck. So we'll put those in first. So this is what would make the Megalodon the game almost impossible to defeat. It's the, it's got these plates on its back, basically like Dunkelosteus, that a Mosasaurus would not be able to bite through. But in real life, Megalodon did not have those spikes. So that would give Mosasaurus a better chance. But here it looks like Megalodon would have the upper hand. It also has spikes all over its back which we're going to be putting in right now. So if the Mosasaurus bit down on one of these spikes, that would be quite painful. So the spikes continue along the back here and disappear. I should make this tail a little skinnier here. Yeah, for the Megalodon, we can actually start with the head, I guess. But actually, I'm going to put these spikes in first. It's got like a middle row that leads up to this dorsal fin. I have to zoom out a bit so you guys can see it a little better. Then on the other side, you can see the other spikes poking up. So clearly a very armored beast. Let's erase some of the lines we do not need from the outline. That's why I like to use like a light pencil that's easy to erase when doing the outline. Because then you can erase it more easily later. So if you, I've done a tutorial on level 40 Megalodon, and I've also done a tutorial on the boss battle Megalodon. The Megalodon level 40 I think is a better tutorial, so if you're going to choose one to draw, level 40 Megalodon is the better choice. The boss battle Megalodon was quite hard to draw, I didn't, there was no good reference images anyways. See, I want to put in the pupil here, with the eye. It's got sort of like that shark look, you know. It's not really looking at anything. But it's almost more looking at us than it is looking at the Mosasaurus. Actually, the Mosasaurus looks like it's looking behind it. So you can change the eyes around. It's a lot of fun to do that. The nose is going to be right about there. So yeah, we should add the teeth in. It's got some really scary looking teeth. They're almost easier to draw. I just draw a bunch of little jumble of triangles. So as you've probably seen in my other videos, I showed you my shark jaw. I have a shark jaw that has like five rows of teeth. It's like from a great white. So it's the same with the Megalodon, it has like unending rows of teeth, so one, when one falls out, two more replaced it. <laughs> well, I don't think two more, but like one more replaces it, and then another row comes up and starts growing. So it has like unending teeth. Like, wouldn't it be cool if humans could have unending teeth? I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> could be kind of weird, because everyone, everyone would have like 
missing teeth all the time. It would be cool, like, if you just in case you like lost a tooth, you could grow a new one. And that de definitely Megalodon was using a lot, going through a lot of teeth because let's say it attacked like a Dunkleosteus, probably a mouthful of its teeth would break if it bit into the Dunkleosteus armor. And probably a lot of times it might strike a bone when biting into a whale or something. So it definitely needed those extra rows of teeth. So we're going to put in the tongue as well. Maybe add a bit of shading. So yeah, for the plates, I'm going to make the lines a little more refined so they stand out. Like so. And I'm going to work a little bit on the dorsal fin here. It's got a basic shark dorsal fin, except it has these quills sticking through it. It's similar to like Dimetrodon, I guess. But there are actually lots of fish that have fins that look like this. Sharks don't, but like other other fish do. Also want, might want to put a little bit more shading on the spikes. So yeah, for the Megalodon we're going to be adding shading. That's what makes it look realistic, not the scales. So that's one way it's harder than the Mosasaurus, but it's easier because the scales are quite time consuming. So I'm going to put some shading there. If you guys are wondering if I've drawn, or at least for the new people who are watching this video, if, you wonder, if you're wondering if I've done Dunkleosteus, I have. I've done Dunkleosteus from Hungry Shark Evolution. I've done it from Jurassic World Game. But I'm, maybe if you guys request it, I could do a realistic looking Dunkleosteus. I love Dunkleosteus, it's one of my favorite sea creatures. Because it's like the one sea creature that I don't know which other sea creature could beat it in a fight. It's like almost invincible. Because of the armor. So I want to put a little bit of shading here. This mechanical pencil is great. Like, you can do the work of shading pencils. Plus it's got like a really refined feel to it. I love the steel hold it's got. Like the other pencils are fine, but I love having a nice round rounded steel. So put some shading along here. It's been a while since I've done Megalodon. <clears throat> the level 40 video was over a year ago, I think. Speaking of years, my channel is turning, I think, three years old on March 14th. So you guys can leave in the comments below what you think would be a cool thing for me to do for my channel's third birthday. Cool video or something like that. Maybe a live stream, an art showcase, or something like that. I'm planning on doing some cool videos in the future once I get some better camera equipment and a microphone or something. I need to get a microphone <laughs> so I could do like a video at the museum, like I could go to a natural history museum, something like that. That would be a lot of fun. I could take footage of me walking around the museum and showing you guys different dinosaurs we could draw and stuff like that. There are a few natural history museums that have great sea displays. I really want to go to, like I think the one in New York has a great sea display. The American Museum of Natural History. 
I've seen lots of pictures of it, and I've drawn sea creatures from that museum. But I haven't gone, so I, that's one of my goals, maybe for this year, I don't know, is to go to the American Museum of Natural History. If you guys have been to Natural History Museums, please leave it in the comment below. I think I've been, I've been to the, the one in, I've been to the Smithsonian before but they are currently closed for renovation, the dinosaur part at least. It's closed for renovation, but I think it opens next year. So yeah, there's lots of cool museums out there. Some definitely better than others. Some just have way bigger collections. <clears throat> I know like the one, the Chicago Field Museum has the largest T-Rex in the world, Sioux. So that's another museum I would like to go visit. But the, I think the American Museum of Natural History has a wider variety of dinosaurs than the Chicago, Chicago Field Museum. So yeah, let's continue doing shading along here. Also, we have to put in the stripes. Got a few stripes along here. We'll put those in. They come up from the belly instead of the, like the Mosasaur ones that come from the back mainly. And they end right about there. So they're actually light colored. So we're going to color around them the opposite of the Mosasaur again. We'll shade between them like so. This megalodon is looking quite cool. So now we want to work a little bit on the flipper here. The flipper also has a few stripes on it. So put those in. I'll color carefully between them. Like so. So also I'm planning to do a few more tutorials from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom trailer. A few of you have commented for me to do the Brachiosaurus walking through the old center of Jurassic World, like the visitor center. So that's one thing I'm going to be doing, among others. So yeah, we're almost done with the Megalodon. Now we, all we have to do is add a little bit more shading to the tail and stuff. Then we'll be almost done. And we'll consign our drawings. So yeah guys, now all we have to do is add a tiny bit more refinement into the tail here. And then we're done. Added a little bit of shading as you can see. And yeah, just sign your drawing. I'm signing mine right next to the Megalodon tail. Put in the date. And yeah, if you like this video, please leave a like, leave a comment. Please share it on all your social media. And please post your drawing on my dinosaur art community on Google Plus called Dinosaur Art. And yeah, I'd love to see how your guys' drawings turned out. I hope you enjoyed drawing the Megalodon vs. Mosasaurus from Jurassic World the game. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Also guys, one last thing. If you'd like to make your drawing look even better, I recommend you add some bubbles. So we're gonna add a, a lot of few so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Just round bubbles like this. You wanna have them look quite natural as well. So make them different sizes, like so. So yeah, that makes the drawing look more realistic and makes it look more like an underwater drawing. So yeah, add bubbles if you feel like it and it'll make your drawing look better. Again, thanks so much for watching.